I grew up in a very low-income family. My dad was in the Marines. He got out of the Marines. He went to college. He was working as a bouncer and doing clinicals and being a father. So I, then my sister was born. And I think my family definitely could have benefited because we were low-income, because my mom was trying to be a stay-at-home mom and also pick up shifts like catering. So I think my family specifically, and I know a lot of low-incomes, I'm from a low-income area, like very, very small area. My I didn't have a stoplight in my hometown, so I, I've i grown up with a lot of families that are low income, and I think that... Well, speaking about low income, not to cut you off, okay. but do you think your family, who is a low income family, maybe other low income families, have been better off when Trump was president or the last three and a half years with Kamala as vice president? I would say, well, she doesn't... Vice president and president are entirely different. I'm not a Joe, Joe Biden supporter. I think that right now, I think there could be better options, but I think what we're at, the child tax credit the, for homeowners. Do you think low-income families were better off under Trump or the past three and a half years? I would say probably in the past three and a half e years, I think. Bro, ain't no way she just said that crap. Ain't no way she just said that crap. Ain't no way in how we was better off with low-income people or anyone was better off during the last three and a half years than they were the four years that Trump was in office. Ain't no way in hell. I think that, I th but I also I think that is again case by case basis. I think we're generalizing. generalizing. So, so in general, do you think low income families were better off under Trump or have they been thriving more under the Biden and Kamala administration? And to be fair, she did say there's nothing that she would have done differently that Biden has done. Where did she say that at? She, she said that, said that, that. At, a, at a town hall. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cause I, like I said, I just I'm not. And on the view, I believe. Not, I'm not disputing that she said. It that, may have also been a podcast, but uh, they asked okay. her, "Is there anything you would have done differently?" And she said, "I really said can't say that I, I would have, or something like okay, that." Okay. So I'm not caught up necessarily. Like I'm in I'm in school, so I'm kind of yeah. Caught, I'm trying to get caught up on assignments, so I'm not necessarily like. And I also think. I don't really get why she went on the Call Her Daddy podcast, I feel like. But also, I don't know why Trump went on the is it Logan Paul or Jake Paul. I just feel like I get trying to get young voters, but I think they both could have handled it a little bit more professionally and not like both sides, I would say, could be a little bit more professionally handled. But I do think this election, I think it's very split. I think I think it's getting hard to kind of figure out what's going on. But yeah, I don't know. So final really answer. Were low income families better off? under Trump or the last three and a half years oh, under I said the, last, the last three and a half years oh, you think say. they've been better well I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt because she said she's a college student so she hasn't been like out here in the real world having to live on her own and make her own money raise a family nothing like that I have been 30 years old I have three kids wife these last three and a half years were terrible especially the first uh, 2021, 2022, where we had the uh, formula shortage. That was hard on my family because both of my kids were on formula. But uh, when Trump was president, everything was fine. Everything before COVID was fine, but we had no wars. We had low interest rates on houses. We had low grocery prices. Y'all remember when, when eggs cost like $15 a dozen? Yeah, that was under Biden, not Trump. I don't want to go back to that. And Kamala Harris is part of the administration that's affecting that crap right now because she says, Joe Biden said that she's in the room with him with every decision that goes on. So Kamala Harris is partially responsible for the stuff that is going on today. They're off yeah. the last three and a half years. Yeah. Are you voting? You are? Okay, yes, yes. finally. Why are you voting for Kamala? Because I would never vote for that one ever. Why? Because he's terrible. He's Why terrible is he terrible? Leader. All these people disagree with you. Well, is that uh, shocking? Uh, where is this video going? It's just our YouTube channel. Oh, um, Tampa News. No, I, I, I don't know. I can't bring. I don't align on the values with him. So okay. I. Yeah. All right. Do you agree? We are better people than what he represents. Okay. You think Kamala is that? Sure? Yes. Okay. What policy of hers is your favorite? <sighs> the idea of democracy in general. The idea of, so what policy is that? What policy is yeah, that? Like what yeah. policy of hers are you really supporting in favor of to cast that vote in a couple weeks? <laughs> okay, so I, I think it's an entire spectrum of things. In individual policy, I think my biggest thing I would say is that I like the idea that she is going to act more so in 
a context where she acts in uniform with other people and can bounce ideas and brings in smart people, whereas Trump is going to act in uniform by himself. I know that's not individually a policy. That doesn't directly answer your question. But I think more so perspective matters. I think emotional intelligence matters. I think mental stability matters. Uh -huh. At 3 a.m., if the nuclear war is going off, I trust Kamala more than I trust President Stable Genius. Okay. Right. Okay, this guy just said a whole lot of nothing. Because I have no, I can't even comprehend what the hell he just said. Like he pretty much talking in a circle just like Kamala Harris did. No idea what he just said. But these are the people that have the ability to vote. As uneducated as he is. All right. And do you think people were better off the past three and a half years than they were under Trump's administration? Yes. You do? Lying. So I'm a physician. Okay. Four years ago, the country was in free fall. Based on life, since my family what? is, you know, Hispanic, uh -huh. the, we've been voting for Korea. Okay. And what if someone was like, if the audience watching is like, oh, what does her being Hispanic have to do with anything with Kamala? Can you bridge? Can you, can you explain that for me? Um, well, I would say that based on, like, history, we've been seeing, like, how Trump actions have been affecting us a little bit. As he was president, we prefer, like, you know, move forward with someone who knows who could fix those mistakes in the past. Okay. What mistakes were there? Uh, I would say from, you know, borders, um, immigration, and... You know, it's been a way tougher since I prefer my fam some of my family members come here. Yeah. Oh, so she was in favor of illegal immigration. Okay, makes sense now. To visit, you know, but those opportunities have been instinct, you know. Okay. So you think she'll fix it in the next four years instead of when she was already vice president? I hope so. Okay. Great. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Oh, all right. What's it feel like that all these classmates are like, you have a very pro-Trump campus. Did you know that? I, I did know that. You yeah. did know that. So that's like well known here. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness. See, listen, I'm old now. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer a college student. I'm elderly. But when I was in when I was in school, it was very weird to be a Trump supporter and you were not well liked. And that was not something you disclosed publicly. Oh, it should be. It should, oh, it be. should be. Why do you think so? <laughs> I just don't have faith in Trump's vice president, who he has elected. Really? I know he was the senator of Ohio, I presume, or I believe, and I just don't have full faith in him. Um, Trump, as an individual from a business standpoint, he's very well educated. Um, when he presents himself, yes, he does have some demeanors about him that are not the most, uh -huh. you know. Right, right. He, but Someone once said, I wouldn't want to have Trump as my neighbor. I could understand that. Yeah. I mean, there'll be some pretty cool parties, but that's not yeah. my thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, is there any policy of Kamala's that you're like, yes, this is great, I love this, I want to support you, voting for you for this policy? Um, I will not lie, I am not fully educated on this matter. I'm not voting this election. Okay. I, I didn't register in time, so unfortunately. I yeah, that's because the only policies Kamala Harris at the time of they recorded this were the ones that she stole from Trump with the no tax on tips. We'll not be doing that. So that's one less vote for Kamala? Um, yes, it is one All right, vote I'll take it. I've seen her stance on immigration and I think we can all collectively agree it's a big problem. Um, she's talking about increasing... Um, you said immigration is a big problem? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know how many illegal immigrants the Biden-Harris administration has let in over the past three and a half years? Unfortunately, I don't. Yeah. So it's in the millions. Mm -hmm. And they just recently started implementing border control and using those resources and a cracking down on that because that has been a very, very big issue for voters. Uh, now we're back, right now, currently, we are back to President Trump's numbers of border, illegal border crossings. So Trump had kind of did it when he was president, and they had to go back to what he was doing to get those numbers that he had. But for all of Biden and Harris, it has been out through the roof. They're just busing them in. It's uncontrollable. There's crime in Ohio and everywhere else. Do you really think that, that they are going to do better on the border when it's taken them three and a half years to go back to have Trump's numbers? 
Uh, yes, because I think that what Trump has done and what he promised to do in his 2016 presidency, he just didn't do. Where's the wall that he promised all of us? So you want the wall? I, you know, I, I don't know exactly what I want, but I know it's an issue. Okay. So. All right, perfect. Thank I you so much. Well, the thing about the wall is, yes, Mexico was not going to pay for it, but we still had low immigration rate, little illegal immigration rates, way lower than what we have now, with with millions of people being bussed over, flown over. It's it's gotten insane. And the fact right now that there's like what about eight hundred mil, eight hundred thousand people who are trying to get to the U.S. border before Trump becomes president, just goes to show you that. The United States has some lax as border policies that the Kamala Biden administration has implemented, and it's really torn this country apart. Because we have all these sanctuary cities spending all tax dollars to house all these illegal immigrants. Now they're getting trying to get them the right to vote. They're trying to get them the right to buy houses. And these people are over here attacking American citizens, taking over apartment buildings. And just came out with a story where an illegal immigrant had extremely inappropriate relations with a five-year-old girl. Y'all want more of that in this country? Y'all are crazy. And if they really cared about the border, they would have been closed it off. They're in power right now. Matter of fact, everything Kamala Harris wants to do for her presidency, she could have done it already with Biden's presidency because she's vice president right now. Now, even though the executive branch does not make laws, they can give the legislative branches ideas for laws. So it's not like Kamala Harris just can make up a law and it's automatically in law. That's not how it works. And that's why you should take everything they say, including President Trump, with a grain of salt, because there are processes you have to go through in order to get these laws enacted. And just like Kamala Harris trying to sell you on abortion rights, saying that she's gonna, I guess, undo Roe v. Wade so that you know it's legal in every single state, she can't do that. She's running on that so hard right now, and yet she can't do it. The only people that can do it is the Supreme Court. Now, the president does have the power to nominate the Supreme Court's justice, but it has to be approved by the Senate, and and they can only appoint the Supreme Court justice if one retires or dies. So her trying to sell you on the dream that she can get that changed is a bunch of BS. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you leave a like, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you all next time.